Hey everybody, Richard R. Immortal Diag, and today we are going to see if we can read the information out of this Vauxhall Immo ring. Uh, it's out of a 2003-ish Vauxhall combo with the 1700 diesel in it. So we're going to open it up and we'll see if we can get it on a, on a reader and see what we can find inside. Right, uh, oh wow, I suppose there you go, there's a part number. It's not focused enough, I don't know, doesn't matter. Um, it's got four little tab things on the side, so I guess we can just uh, open this up. As far as I'm aware, I've got to undo some solder joints on the inside of these. Never done one, never had to. But usually I can pull the pin code from other places by OBD but we have some discrepancies on this car and we want to know what the MO code is inside this unit see if it's been changed or something to that effect so I believe we are dealing with these two pins here mm, will it focus of course it won't uh, sorry about the focus anyway that pin that pin joins in the loop there so we're gonna have to um we'll probably put a bit of cleaner on that this looks like there's some old residue or something maybe some old flux or some sort of a conformal coating or something like that just to protect it we'll have a clean up on that and then uh, we'll get this out and what we might do can we change this Flux. So I'm going to try and use one of these little solder sucky thing. Let's see if we can get that in. Good enough. And when you press it, press the button on the side. You know, I'll just shoots the thing up, suck solder up through the thing. So hopefully. flying everywhere it's disappearing slowly other options on this is solder braid which we might revert to Let's see if this will work there Get some solder braid. All right, bit of solder braid stuff seems to be doing the job a bit better. Soaking up this solder. Press 
pretty well gone there. See if this will lift out. There to go. We'll keep persevering at it. But yeah, just get the uh, the solder off there. Right, so I have got it out. Sorry, it was a bit awkward to try and um, use the solder braid and get this lifted uh, with the uh, camera in the way in front of me. But you can see the two the two holes there. And you can see where that those coils came up through. Um, all I did have to do was I had to sort of pry this up ever so slightly or put a small amount of pressure lifting it right at the end just to heat the two corners because there was a bit of solder that refused to come out was just stuck in the hole so I just heated that up and just give it a little bit of lift and it came apart quite nicely so we can clean up those pins later when we push this all back together and then we'll solder on nice anyway this is the side that we want to get involved in and this is the chip that we want so we'll have to take that off and put it in the uh, in an adapter uh, I think I'll use a VVDI prog today we'll see how that stands up to it uh, I think I might have to rob an adapter out of a different set but we'll see if it works. So all we'll do is I'll have a quick clean up around here with a bit of isopropyl alcohol again. Um, and we'll use hot air on this to get this off. Um, I'll put a bit of flux around it after I've cleaned it. And again, a bit of hot air going around and then we'll lift the chip off. So just uh, give this a little bit of a clean. Does the number show up any better? Yeah, it's probably a bit clearer there. Can you see the numbers on it? Anyway. Uh, wipe off. Flux on there, load of flux, brilliant stuff. Right, uh, what might I need? I might need some tweezers, might I? Uh, yeah, um, let's just try it without. I don't know if it's easier to prop it up to show you or put it straight down. Right, uh, let's see if we can tilt this camera down a bit without making a mess of everything. Got hot air. Uh, what I might do is zoom out. I'll stop the video and I'll zoom out and see if we can get a clear. pushed it off to the side all the pads are still there uh, hot air was on at about 300 degrees so that's all good so we'll give that a bit of a clean off we'll let it cool down obviously we could see which way the chip was sat around anyway but make sure you know if you're going to do it yourself make sure you know which way around it is so you can put it back on properly 
Uh, so we're going to let that cool down and then we'll put it in a reader. Right, so we've got VVDI prog, we've got the adapter there set up on it. Uh, I don't know, XDPG16. Got the chip in there, got a shadow over it. Anyway, this top corner, you see there's a little notch out. Uh, in this top corner of the actual chip, you can see a notch out, and there's a there's a weight for it to go in. Anyway, so you can see it. Same on all the other chips on the bigger ones as well. There's that little notch in the corner. So if we're going on to the main screen now. Let's try and get everything in. So up to the top. So type a mobilizer. I've already been into it. So we select Opal because that's a voxel. And you've got your choices here, Astra, Vectra, blah, blah, blah. So you want the Immo box. If you look on the connection diagram, make that bigger. Tells you something about a cable that we don't care about. And then it shows us a picture of our board and a chip that we need to remove. And to put it into this dedicated adapter. There you, go. you can see where it says pin one and there's a little notch out there. You all say that. So there you go. So it tells you what you need to take off as well. And that's the uh, the TMS 370 exciting stuff. So then it's already on this EEPROM here. So we're going to read it. Should do its thing. There we go. Operation success. Um, so this none of this really means a lot to us at the moment anyway. Um, I'm assuming that the passcode's encrypted on it. Um, so this is usually chassis number or part of it. You can check that on your own vehicle. The front bit isn't there, I don't quite know why that looks a bit different, but it does. And what we should be able to is go up to here where it says password and then we'll read again. It should tell us what our password is, which it does. There we go. Three one, three one. Now I said there was a bit of a story to this, and there was um, we had a few issues on what a mobilizer code was in what, and whether something's been changed or because we had an issue with it. Now we read out the dashboard or instrument cluster, and we had three one three one. I've now read this out, which is the MO unit, and we've got 3131, but we've got a different code in the engine ECU. So none of it's matching up, and the vehicle won't start. So what we're going to have to do is, now that we know that these two are that code, um, we'll have to clear down the engine ECU and put a new immobilized code in that, and then hopefully we should start it up again. So all we've got to do now is go through the process putting it all back together so tilt this down so obviously we've got to go back onto our board we've got the VVDI prog there if I close it all down just a minute file not saved yeah I'll just quickly save the file on this. All right. Disconnect that. All right. So we'll lift up the adapter. So that's the the adapter board there. You can see where the two things go in, and they go onto there and there. It's pretty self-explanatory. That side of it. So what I'll do is I'll just get a little um, a little pick and go gently either side, pop the chip out. That's what we do with a little screwdriver. There we go. So that's popped out. You get all this out of the way. And I'll get some soldering station sorted out and I'll have a clean up on these pads. 
maybe put a little bit of extra solder on them and then get this into place we solder it back on and put it all back together and then we'll have to solder the the two pins on for the um the coil and the transponder so um right i'll get some soldering stuff out all right so i've got it roughly back in place some solder on all the pads so what i'm hopefully going to do is just hold it in place a little bit of a screwdriver without moving it if I can. Which I can. Hopefully, we can get a couple just tapped in the corner. So we've got a few attacked. Should be well away. So we're all tacked in place. I think they look pretty good there. Might have a, just a quick clean off, make sure they all look in line. And then what I'll uh, probably do is just put the hot air back on it and let that all sink into place now that it's sort of roughly there. I'll turn it back on in two seconds. Let's get the hot air on it. A lot of them look like they're soldered properly. What I'll do is I'll um, check it out on a just under a under a microscope and check and make sure none of these are bridged, anything like that. And then um, yeah, we'll put the uh, the same on here. We can put it back on. We can get these uh, other two joints done. All right, we just do the last little bit with the board put back on top. Some solder fed in there. And that is all done. Don't to get that in shot. They're soldered back on nice. Don't see any gaps or marks. Quick wipe off. And then just your top, top cover goes back on. Just like that. Clips back in. So that's all done. One Vauxhall immobiliser. Transponder box, read the code out, code out of, put back on, get it back in the car, change the codes that we need to change, and that's all done. Uh, that's the adapter for anyone playing along at home for the uh, for the VDVDI prog. Um, I did find out that other adapters don't work. I tried it, so I had to order this one in, especially to do the job, because uh, I wanted to do it with a with that programmer just to see you know if it was capable and what it would do so thanks for watching and come along for the next one